I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. So we have Dylan over there in the corner, uh, chewing on his bone. I have tried to keep him out, but he keeps opening the door when I'm trying to film. So you're just gonna have to enjoy the melodious song of his bone chewing. Um, maybe in the new year, after all of the craziness dies down, I'll figure out a way to keep him qui quiet, but until then, enjoy the quirky noise. <laughs> So today I'm going to be talking about the second half, no, first half, we're not even the second half yet, it's, it's been a long month guys, the first half of December. So we're going to be doing the wrap up. And I read a lot of books, I didn't realize how many books that I read, uh, so I'm just going to try to give you the gist of, of them, and if they, I really enjoy them, I'll tell you a little bit more about them. So let's start with poetry. I read two poetry collections, both of these were on the shortlist for the National Book Award for poetry, and so let's talk about this one first. This is The Book of Endings by Leslie Harrison. Now this book has like no punctuation, and so when I read it, it's very difficult for me to get into the rhythm of poetry. When I read poetry, I love to feel the sounds on my tongue, I love the rhythm, I love hearing it out loud. But with no poetry, I find it more difficult to read. So for example, here is my horrible reading of one of these poems. This is called Snowfields. And I wonder, sprawled on the curved, recurved back of the hills, the towers of clouded sky, crushing the horizon flat, I want to know how to stripe the grief storm from the flesh, flints the spirit scape it down to clean bone i'm breaking make it take and stride another raw dawn these days of snow all cold on frozen take and stride this place of glass ice this place knit stitch pierced by the shadows of all those departed birds begin again to assemble linen pillows blankets scarves the small soft comforts cushion cradles learn how to lay me down in something other than danger other than fury ice and risk learn to stop dropping this body into snowfields making these empty shapes learn to stop waiting for them to be filled <laughs> so as you can tell i really struggled to figure out how to read the poetry and i feel that really that me trying to read that really exemplifies that but in there you could tell there are beautiful there's beautiful language there's beautiful word choice and that's really why it was nominated uh for the national book award because it is so beautiful i just struggled to get into it but once i did there was stuff there so uh definitely uh keep going if you get frustrated in the beginning like i did the next one the next one i want to talk about is don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite poetry collections of the year. And I really enjoyed this poetry collection. Let's see if I can find um, the stanza while I'm talking to you. Um, here we go. So uh, Denez Smith is a gay African-American man and he talks about uh, police brutality against African-American men but also what it's like to be a gay man um, and how 50, if you're a gay man and a gay African-American man, there we go, you're 50% likely to get infected with HIV. And so he talks about that a lot. So here's one of my favorite poems in the collection probably. And this is, every day is a funeral and a miracle. And in the third stanza, it says, Hallelujah, today I rode past five police cars, and I can tell you about it now, what to do with my internal universe. Just how will I survive the little cops running inside my veins, hunting white blood cells, and bang, bang, I'm dead. Do I think someone created AIDS? Maybe. I don't doubt that anything is possible in a place where you can burn a body with less outrage than a flag. Um, and he just pairs those beautifully, and... It, a lot of the poetry talks about HIV and blood. There's a lot of blood imagery and almost blood as it's its own sentient being almost sometimes. And I just really loved what he did with this. I'm going to link a video of him reading his own poetry so you can get a feel for it. I love when he reads his own poetry. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So definitely go check out this poetry collection. Oh, this is like, I think this is going to go on my debate list. Yes, of course it is. Favorite of the year. What are you talking about, Kendra? Um, oh, and before I forget, um, this one is from Akron University Press, and this one's from Grey Wolf Press. For, from Knopf Books for Young Readers, we have I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erica L. Sanchez. And I haven't really been into YA, but when I heard of this book, I knew I had to read it. And this is about Julia, who is the daughter of Mexican immigrants. They live in Chicago, and her parents are illegal, and so she kind of 
has to maneuver that experience. Uh, the book starts out at her sister Olga's funeral. His sister has been hit by a car and she died and so uh, Julia is not as put together. So she's not as perfect, you know, as her older sister. She's constantly compared to her older sister and she really feels that and she's really frustrated with her dad who kind of, well, he ignores her and she's kind of just navigating growing up. Uh, this is a book specific to the Mexican-American like child of immigrants experience and I really loved how you cannot remove it from any of that context uh, and it still be the same story. I really love uh, how she gets to know her parents as she gets older and that's kind of part of growing up is understanding that your parents are people too with their own backgrounds and histories. Uh, I really love this book. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite YA books of the year but that being said I am an adult and this has a lot of intense content. There's a lot of language, uh, there's sex and discussion of sexual assault and just a lot of different things. So I think just heads up if you're giving this to a teenager, if you're not sure, uh, read it first or whatever. Um, but this is definitely on the older end of the YA spectrum. Um, really, really enjoyed this book. It's really cute. <laughs> From the new imprint Kathy Dawson Books is Jane Unlimited by Christian Kishore. Sorry, I can't really like stop the glory of shine from this book. You might know Christian Kishore from her book Graceling and Bitter Blue. They are amazing uh, high fantasy books. They are probably some of my favorites. I sometimes I get very frustrated with YA fantasy and how uh, tropey it is and how there's so many love shapes, but you know. Christian Kishore is just one of the best. So when she decided to write a choose your own adventure book, I was annoyed, almost angry, because I was like, no, you have such great talent. And like, I know this is me being selfish, but like, why would you want to do that? But she did. She wanted something different. She'd written three really big epic fantasy books. She wanted to try something different. And so she did. And uh, it's amazing. So I'm going to show you this little graphic in the beginning. And the protagonist, Jane, uh, she makes umbrellas. So there's umbrella imagery throughout all of it. And I really thought that was pretty cool. The mailman came and it was for a neighbor. Dylan was very disappointed. His heart and soul, very sad. <laughs> he loves to eat PS guy. Anyway, so this is Choose Your Own Adventure book. There's the setup uh, where Jane's Aunt Magnolia has died and so she ends up at this billionaire's like island mansion. And she ends up on the stair landing and she can choose five different directions to walk and follow different five different people. Each choice is a different story. It's so cool. And each story is written in a different genre. So you have like a space opera and a spy thriller and different ones and they're all really cool. And what's really well done is that in the beginning there are a lot of questions and secrets that you want to uncover and each story only reveals one or two of those secrets. So you actually have to read it all to get the whole picture of what's going on and you see how there were so many different possibilities for this um, for Jane's life and it's really cool um, how she does it and it's so well orchestrated you see all the different stories actually in the background of all the other stories you know what would happen and what the secret is and there are just so many hidden gems in this book I was very surprised how much I love this book because I'm not really a big choose your own adventure fan but this is definitely one that I'm very glad I read and I actually listened to it and the audiobook is great um, so if you love YA, you love fantasy, you love Christian Kishore, any of those things then you should be picking up this book. Another book that I've been trying to get on audio is uh, The Drive by Jane Harper. I got this uh, from the publisher earlier this year and then I got it on audio and I really pushed to find it after I learned that it won the Golden Dagger Award for mystery. This book is set in rural Australia and uh, Aaron left the town uh, when he was younger due to some secrets uh, that we learn later. Um, so we're kind of trying to figure out why he left the town but he returns because his best friend died as his friend growing up died and what happened was it appears that his best friend killed his family and then uh, committed suicide. So that, you know, alone, you're like, well, that's suspicious. Of course it is. It's a mystery. So I really enjoyed this book. Like, I didn't think it wowed me at all. 
uh, in that sense, but I enjoyed listening to it. And I think the narrator especially helped because the narrator had this beautiful Australian accent and I thought it added so much to the story. And it was just a fun read to read in between really intense books. So I'll definitely be picking up Jane Harper. But really, I guess for me, that's what mysteries are. It's kind of a break between really intense, um, heavy topic type books. So even though there's like murder and mayhem in these, you know, they're still kind of like fun and sometimes thrillery, that kind of thing. So, uh, but this was definitely more a slow burn type mystery, which is my favorite kind of mystery or thriller. I'm not as much a thriller person as much as a mystery person because I'm more about not what exactly is going on, but how the author does it. And I just enjoyed the atmosphere and this the story behind this and again the performance by the narrator is absolutely fantastic so this is from Flatiron in the US so you'll definitely want to go check out this if you are a mystery fan and or, or at least relate to mysteries like I do Another book that I read is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. Jennifer Egan wrote A Visit from the Goon Squad, which won the Pulitzer Prize. Now, Jennifer Egan is like, as I was like, so enthusiastic, but Jennifer Egan is one of the best postmodern writers uh, of our time. Like, she writes these beautiful, uh, innovative type novels. But this is none of those things. This is a historical fiction novel, and this is like straight up historical fiction, very traditional, nothing really innovative about it. So I went into this hoping that it would be like historical fiction with a twist, and it's not. Uh, she is an amazing writer, and she did this very well. And one of the things I love about historical fiction is that we learn about kind of like jobs and time periods and how things worked on a mechanical level. So she talks about this woman named Anna, who's the protagonist, learning to dive. And we learn about the suit and how it works and the mechanics of all that. That's, that's really what I love about historical fiction. That's probably why I like the Little House series, because she talks about like making maple syrup candy and different things. Anyway, uh, so this book though, besides being very well researched and very well written on a sentence level, I found the story kind of boring. I'm not gonna lie, like what is happening? Will anything ever happened? There is like the mafia. When the mafia is involved, it became very interesting. And then when we find out what happened to uh, Anna's dad, that was also interesting. Uh, but there were just kind of like brief spurts, sort of like baseball. You sit around waiting for something to happen and then something awesome happens and you're like, oh, I'm, I'll totally wait for the next thing to happen, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I kind of wish I hadn't started with this one. Like, it was very incredibly well done. Like, it's very well written and all the things, but the story, on a story level, it just wasn't that exciting. So I'm still going to read more Jennifer Egan, but I probably wouldn't start here, and I probably wouldn't recommend starting here, even though I haven't read any of her other books, if that makes sense. So, you know, there we go. Last book I'm going to talk about today is Home Fire. It's out from Riverhead. Oh, by the way, um, Manhattan Beach from Scribber. There we go. Uh, this is by Kamala Shamsi. This was long listed for the Man Booker, and which is really how I came to want to put this on my TBR. Though this is a retelling of Antigone, and if you don't know, Antigone is a Greek tragedy. It's my favorite, probably my favorite Greek tragedy. I think Medea is also up there, uh, but I really love Greek tragedies about women, obviously. So I love what Kamala Shamsi does with this retelling. She updates it to make it relevant, kind of communicate the intense. Uh, feeling of what would be going on. So if you don't know, Antigone uh, wants to get her brother burial rights. But because he rebelled against the king, the law says he must rot out in the middle of, you know, the land and birds will eat him. And she's like, no, my brother deserves burial rights. So it's a whole question of whose morality is superior, the law or, or this more spiritual or familial love um, uh, morality kind of deal. She recreates that in this. And so Ismay and Anika, Tigany, uh, brothers, Parvez, leaves and goes to join um, this terrorist group in Syria. But then he wants to come home and a lot of stuff ensues. So I found it very interesting, all the parallels that Kamala did with this book. It was just so well done in that way. Like it was an excellent retelling. But at the same time, though I was incredibly impressed with how she did that, it, I feel like you would miss a lot if you hadn't read Antigone. So while I really enjoyed this, I would highly recommend reading Antigone before you read this book, because I feel like you're gonna miss a lot of the details that are in the book and a lot of the layers of meaning that she has created uh, with this. So I, I want to read more of Kamala Shamsi. I want to see what she does with a non-retelling type thing. But you know, 
I'm gonna read start reading Hogarth Shakespeare in January and going through those I'd be very interested in people doing a Greek tragedy version of that because I think that would be really interesting. So those are all of the books that I'm going to talk to you about now. I'm trying to split it up and guess how many I'm going to read in the second half of December when all of the celebrations are happening. So I've saved all of the digital audiobooks to talk about later in the second half, uh, but those those are just it for now. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. <laughs> Hopefully I won't have to do three wrap-ups this month. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to avoid that. So We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I'm really close to finishing my goal for the year, a uh, reading goal, so we'll see if that happens. But anyway, I guess I will see you later for a chat uh, about the end of your books. Wow, I can't believe that's happening. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. <music>